I told our seniors, you know, hey guys, this is it. You got four games left, two left in Mackey, and so let's let's uh, let's make the most of each of these uh, these times we get to play in front of the home fans. All right, let's open it up for some questions. Anyone have any questions? Oh, hi guys, can you hear me? It's Duke. We can hear you, Duke. Okay. Uh, so, um, Coach, it, it, we talked after the game, and it, it was a nonstop positive, so like you were saying right now. Um, I know you know you lean towards more perfectionism and all that. Did you take anything away that you're like, okay, this this has to get better for San Jose State? Yeah, I mean. I mean, we we you know we, we we still need to be better in penalties, obviously, and and um, but after that that stat Chris wrote, read me earlier in the year, I'm less concerned about it. But I mean, we have to we have to we have to just be more disciplined, you know, and and obviously, you know, we put a high high degree on being aggressive here. I mean, but at the same time, we gotta we gotta try to limit, you know. The, the fouls and, and and those types of things. We didn't win the fourth quarter, which is always a big emphasis for us. Uh, I think they scored 13, we scored 10 in the fourth, so that was not very good. Um, but you know, I thought uh, I thought our union played outstanding. I thought they really really did a good job of protecting, and that's going to be important this week as well. Um, I thought our D line did a good job. Uh, putting pressure and getting minus yardage plays on their quarterback. Um, you know, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't have to punt, which was great. Um, you never want to punt. I hate punting, and so um, you know, to be able to continue to drive the ball and and and, and put points on the board is always important. So, um, but yeah, we we have to get better. Um, you know, I really want our team to emphasize being physical, whether it's. Um, running the ball offensively, stopping the run defensively, playing hard on the perimeter. Those are areas we got to be we've got to be the best team on the field every week as we go down the stretch and it starts this week. And I know we like to pick your brain about the rivalries you've been in and all that. And, and so now that now that your rivals done with, um, but there's but you're like you said there's a ton of important football left. Is there a trick or a key to getting these kids Okay, look, you, you did, you beat them, and now we've really got to get back to it. Is there a trick to that? No, it's just I think I think it, we go back to our preseason commitment. You know, our preseason commitment was, you know, we have twelve regular season games, and 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 we want to prepare at a high level every week. And so, you know, we talked about, you know, there's only seven percent of all Division One teams are championship teams, and that means you got to practice. Really, at a 93% rate, an A, you got to give A practices every day to get that kind of consistent performance. So, you know, this is a team that beat us a year ago. That game, you know, really was an important game and it stung. And, um, you know, they're a different team than last year. We're a different team. It's different circumstances, but it's still, it's a very important conference game. It's a very important division game. So, um, you know, we we have to be prepared uh, for all the things that they do and what they have been doing this year. And then we've got to we got to push push for improvement. You know, and I think that's something that this group of seniors and this these leaders have really embraced. And um, and we're still not playing our best football. We can play better. I thought we did a better job of um, limiting limiting the explosive plays last week, and that's going to be important again. Um, that we we don't allow um, the explosive plays, and those were important in last year's game when we played San Jose. The you know we gave up a kickoff return a year ago. We gave up some uh, big runs that were basically dead plays. I mean, we hit the guy in the backfield when we bounced off of him, and he ended up making big runs. So we 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 have to do a better job of eliminating the explosives defensively, and um, and continue to play. Uh, you know, just detailed, accountable football. And so we've got a lot, we've still got a lot to work on. 
Coach San Jose State won the conference championship last year, and right now they're not really in that same position. Just what do you make of the Spartans this year, and how much of that is not having Nick Starkle? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I think they've, they've got a couple players that are different, um, and it changes the personality of, of what they're trying to do a little bit. Um, you know, and they were, they were playing at a little bit higher rate last year on defense when we played them at the end of the year. But they still have a lot of the same players, so they're certainly capable of of playing great defense. They're capable of scoring a lot of points and playing really explosively on special teams. A lot of those same players are back, so I mean the makeup of their team is is pretty pretty similar to what it was a year ago. And so, you know, we're a different team. We're more mature. We're we've we've learned some hard lessons, and so. We got to take all that to the field in our preparation and and get ready for this game. You know they're all different. You know they're they're never the same. And uh, you know this team that we're playing this year is different than the one we played last year. So and we are too. So um, you know, but we, we we certainly have respect for what they what they can do, and we have to go out and be ready to play. You know you know t- take the next step for us as a football team. I want to piggyback off of something that Duke said earlier. Do you kind of believe in in trap games? And I I say that kind of cautiously because obviously San Jose State's three and two within the conference, but then not getting your team to look ahead to the Aztecs the week after. I mean, I think every play game's a trap game. I don't know. I I spent six years in the NFL, and every 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 team you play was great. And and if you didn't play, if you didn't prepare like a professional, you got beat. And you know we try to take that same mentality. I mean, you know we re- we have respect for everybody we play against. We know that they're getting coached. They have guys that are on scholarship, and they have coaches that want to win. And so, you know, I don't. I think it's more about how we prepare, and 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 uh, the seriousness and our commitment to how good we want to be as a team. And so, you know, we have high aspirations. You know, to be honest with you, we we just became belt bowl eligible. That wasn't really our goal coming into this season. Our goals were much higher than that. And so we, we're still pushing. We're still striving to be the very best we can be and to play better football this month in November. And and so it starts it starts this week with this game versus, with San Jose. Does practice look different this time of year, Coach, in regard to preparation and giving the kids a, a little more time just knowing how long the season is and, and, and the grind since you've been at it since summertime, or, or do you maintain pretty much the same level of consistency in your preparation? Yeah, I just – I we, 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 we cut down a little bit. We'll cut period out and we'll cut a minute off of uh, individual. But uh, – you know the reps and that will will put will stay uh, relatively the same, and we need a certain. We're very specific about what we we do during the week, and we feel like that's why we're able to execute at a high level. Is because we have we really work our schemes a lot, and um, and so we will cut back some. I think more than anything else, it's the mental strain that you put on kids as the season goes on. I don't talk to them very long. You know, this time of year, I mean, I get to it and I get done. And, and I think it's it's just the mental strain of the routine of doing the same things over and over again. And so we try to we try to hit it and get it. And really, when we have something to tell them, we, we, we try to give them the important things they need. And um, same thing in meetings. And I just think, you know, it's important this time of year to be upbeat to the point and move on and and so that's kind of how we operate and we've had a lot of success doing it that way and over the years and and um you know we we just don't try to beat a dead horse this time of year we 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 kind of know what we want to do and we got the kids in a good frame of mind and we want to keep them there Do you think I have an X's and O's question for you? I know you were concerned with the long runs of in the Hawaii and the Fresno State game, and um, you know Charles Williams is a good runner, and uh, but he didn't get free. I, I wondered if there's any sort of adjustment you could tell us about or or something that you saw. 
You know, we just have really, really talked about it and, and really uh, focused on, um, you know, I went back and watched the four four years of UNLV games and really we should have won all four of them, to be honest with you. I mean, we let them back into games and we, we gave them big plays that really gave them life in those games. And with just a little bit uh, better fundamentals and detail, they don't make those big runs and they don't make those big passes. So I just think we've been really focused on making those corrections with our, our defensive players and just trying to show them how, you know, if we if we play our gap responsibility and our fundamentals, those plays, they might get five or six, but they should never get 60. And, and, um, and so uh, I thought we did a really good job. I mean, he, Williams is really a good back. He's one of the best backs in our league. I think he was 80 yards from breaking the UNLV rushing record. And, um, you know, he wasn't able to get it Saturday night. So he's going to have to get it uh, against somebody else, but not, not against us, which is, you know, which is why you pl play. And so, um, but yeah, I, I thought our guys, that was a real, real big, big difference in this game is that we, we did not give them chunk plays on the most part. And, and, um, and, and that's why they were never really able to get in a striking distance with us. Do you feel like last year's San Jose State game has been a motivating factor for this team over the offseason and heading into this year? Yes, I do. And 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 I and I I think it's more about learning lessons. Uh, you know, and we're big on that, you know, um sometimes the lessons you learn are hard lessons and and uh and I really think it's less about San Jose State and it's more about us and 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 understanding how to play with detail and accountability, understanding how to respond um, when uh, when momentum changes, you know. There's an old saying about momentum. Momentum is just attitude, you know. And if somebody makes a play on you, you got to learn how to respond and make a play back. And, and so, you know, I think we've learned some lessons from that game. Um, you know, there was a number of plays that started going the other way. And all we had to do was, was readjust ourselves and get back and, and do the things we were capable of doing. So, you know, we've been in those situations this year. You know, we were behind at Cal and had to come back. And um, so I think we're, we're just a, a more mature group of guys. We, we, we've learned some tough lessons. We, we've been battle-tested. And um, you know that's that's just another one that we've got to take with us and and use as we move forward. Why do you think Dayon Henley has taken such a big step forward from kind of going from a role player last year to an impact player and one of your best defenders? He's a fabulous athlete. I mean, he's one of the most explosive, strong, quick twitch athletes we have on our team. He may be the best athlete we have, and that's saying a lot because we got some pretty good guys. But um, just understanding the fundamentals of the position, I think uh, Ronnie Wheat does a really good job of the cerebral part of playing linebacker. And there's a lot of moving parts to it, and, and there's a lot of tendencies that you have to study. And I just think Dayon is, he really played discipline in this game. You know, he didn't run out of gaps. Um, he, he played his responsibility. He didn't try to do too much. And he was, you know, on the interception that he had, he was in the exact perfect place. You know, Dom was putting pressure on the quarterback. And, uh, boy, what a big – you saw his athletic ability after he caught the ball. Just amazing. And, um, you know, we're capable of that. You know, you know, we try to have as many playmakers on defense as possible, guys that can make catches. Uh, make make interceptions, force turnovers, and 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 return the ball. And so, um, 14 points on turnovers is a big deal. And you know, Dan should just continue to get better. You know, every week that he plays. Since Elijah Cook uh, Cooks went down, um, Cole Turner's played really really well. He's got eight touchdowns, and you know at least two touchdowns through the last four games. Have you guys been focused a little bit more on getting him the ball with Elijah not out there? Yeah, I think Cole's such a weapon and, and uh, you know, the combination of Cole and Romeo and 
and then and then Tori and Justin and and Melquan and um, it's just there's just you know there's a lot of people for the defense to be concerned about, um, but I don't think there's any question. Carson has a lot of confidence in Cole and uh, in his ability to make plays and. You know, a tight end is a quarterback's best friend, especially when he's as tall as Cole. And and uh, you can always find him on the field, and you can always throw away from the defender, no matter where he is, and trying to cover him. And so I just think Carson has a lot of confidence in him. And Cole's just, you know, he's, he's taking another step in his game. I, I, mean, I think Romeo and Cole both, and Carson, have taken another step in their game and just their confidence and their understanding – you know their route running and the way they're going after the ball is just um, it's 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 at a different level right now and it's fun to watch and uh, they're they're hungry to get a chance to play again. What do you think's been the biggest reason for the uptick in terms of the attendance? I mean, obviously you guys are winning and you know you were winning the last year. You guys had full capacity in 2019, but it just seems like there's a different environment. What have you guys put in place to make sure that this is a better place to watch again? Well, I just think, I think, I think the administration's done a great job of making it uh, an inviting place to come. And, you know, we, we want people to come and, and, and be together on Saturdays and socialize and spend time. You know, I, I, I grew up uh, in the South end zone of Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin. And so many people go to games that don't even really want to watch the football game they but they go because their friends are there and they go because they want to socialize they go because it's kind of the place to be on saturday afternoon in the fall and and um boy i I think our fans had a great time at the game it was an entertaining game um you know and the other part of that chris is that you're really part of the game you know our our students when they come and they make noise they're part of the game they're part of competing for the Fremont Cannon and and we're we're actually looking I'm glad you asked me that question we're actually looking for some super fans we need some students that want to kind of lead the charge in the in the south end zone and kind of uh, when we you kind of saw it with with I got a crazy special teams coach so and if you if you're in our meetings he starts the meetings off with it pumping his chest with the with the hum and all that and and uh, you know we got that going a little bit last week, uh, but every time we have a kickoff, that's what we want the whole team up, and we got our guys doing the doing the hum, and uh, and so I, I it's just an awesome thing. And you know I started the season off talking about focus and attention, and 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 individually your energy is where your focus is at. But there's something really amazing when you have a whole football team that has the same focus and you have an amazing energy. But when you put a whole crowd of people, you know, if you've ever been at a concert and everybody's, you know, singing the same song or getting excited for the same song, it's the same thing in a football game. When everybody is doing the same thing and there's focused energy, it's a powerful thing. And uh, that's the way we want Mackey to be. And, 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 uh, and we just, I can't thank the fans enough, and, the, and especially the students. You know, your student section is the energy of your stadium. I don't care where you are, what field, when the kids are into the game, there's a special atmosphere in your stadium. And, and that's why it's so awesome. So, so our guys are, are working on that right now. We want a super fan in the south end zone of Mackey. We need about four or five students that want to lead the charge. Come, come find us. We're in the Cashel Shell building over here in the South End Zone. We're we're gonna help you get T-shirts, gear, anything you need to make this happen. Maybe we'll get some uh, rainbow-colored afros like back in the day at Dodger Stadium. But but let's let's get this thing cranked up. We got two more home games, and they're really awesome. It's probably the last two games you're gonna get a chance to see Carson Strong play here at Mackey. So uh, and the rest of these great seniors. So. Um, don't need to get on my soapbox, but but we're really seriously talking about. It. I had a buddy that had that uh, coach in the NFL for 23 years, and he was at the game last last weekend, and uh, he said, "You know what, you guys need you need a super fan." And I said, "You know what, you're exactly right. We do. So we're working on that, and any help our student uh, council can help us with that. We'd love we'd love to get that nailed down." 
So you just apply by going to uh, the secretary's Just office? come over here to our offices and see us. We'll we'll help you get geared up and we'll we'll talk to you about some of the stuff we can get rolling. Appreciate that question, Chris. <laughs> Okay, more questions, Coach. Uh, I, just one, Jeff. I, um, Coach, you mentioned Dom, and I'm sure you've seen the film, but uh, I happen to be watching him on that interception return. He's not only leading the blockers, he's out running guys that are supposedly faster than him. <laughs> um, he's a tremendous athlete. I, I wondered if you could just, just touch on what Dom is I think I think Dom is, you know, when we recruited Dom, you know, he was our first year, and you know, and we just saw his energy. You know, the thing about pass rushing is that you have to be relentless and you have to have a relentless energy. And that's what Malik Reed had. Um, that's what Corey Rush had for us. And, and you know, Dom saw Malik. He saw Corey, how hard they played. And Dom is a tremendous athlete. You know, he's, he's he doesn't have the prototypical body type that you look, big, tall, long guy. He's short, he doesn't have real long arms. But gosh, I always te tease him. He's just always running, he's spinning, and uh, he's just relentless in going after the quarterback. And that effort pays off. And uh, you know, on the interception, he kind of he kind of bull rushed the guard and then he spun inside and he kind of hit Friel's arm. And then the ball went off to, uh, to Dan, but you're right, you know, just that extra effort, he's out in front leading blocks. And, and you know, the other thing is our defense did a great job on both of those turnovers getting out front and blocking. And we talk about uh, that all the time, about taking the ball to the boundary and, and, get, and finding a way to get in the end zone. So that's just something we could build on and, and two great examples of it last weekend.